Hey guys, it's Kimmy. Um, okay, so I got a tutorial for you um, on these butterflies right here. And I wanted to show you um, a technique that I use when I'm doing mini albums and um, cards, uh, book covers, um, journals. Um, what else could you use it on? I did it on my ATC swap cards. Um, basically, it's an all-around technique you can use. Um, I'm going to show you how to make uh, these fabric butterflies right here. Um, my Blazy Butterflies. Um, stiff and posable. Um, I don't know how, a better way of putting it. Let me plug in my hot glue gun really quick because I want to show you an idea you can do with it also. And then I'm going to double check and make sure I'm in focus because you guys all know I'm paranoid about not being in focus. <laughs> okay, let me double check. Okay, I'm in focus. Alright, so basically... I'm going to show you how to make these stiff and posable, and because it does take some drying time, I already prepared a couple to show you after um, that it does dry. It takes about four hours to dry, depending on how long you soak it in the, um, what do you call it, the solution that I'm going to show you how to make to make these stiff and posable. Okay, first of all, um, you need a throwaway spoon or whatever, um, you use in a disposable container, I, I pick up these like six for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. And I, I think they're um, like an asset you need in your craft room just because I don't like using things that I would take back into the kitchen. I don't know if that makes sense, but I just don't want to risk, you know, the chemicals being in my family's food. So anyways, um, yeah, so a little bit of OCD there. But okay, so let's get this started. Um, I keep a container of water in my craft room, which I think is another good tip um, for cleaning brushes, um, diluting and making solutions, making my own um, glimmer, shimmer, um, what else? Uh, cleaning up if you may have a spill or whatever. I just keep it in my craft room. So this is my water container for my craft room. Let me open it up really quick. And then I also got the Mod Podge here. And this is the glass kind, but you can use the mat. Um, this is what I have on hand, so this is what I'm going to use. Also, if you don't have Mod Podge, um, Aline's Tacky Glue Fabri-Tac works really well for this. Uh, I've never tried Elmer's glue, um, so I'm not sure. I, I can't recommend that uh, because I've never tried it. But if you try it and it works, let me know so I can, you know, let other people who might not have any of this other supplies on hand. So, anyways, let's get this started. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a little butterfly like I did on my ATCs. And then I'm going to show you the larger butterfly right here. And these butterflies are also available at Shabby Scraps. It's um, www.zibit. Hold on, let me double check, make sure. Okay, it's www.zibit.com backslash Shabby Scraps. And she has um, two different sizes on there right now um, of these beautiful um, lace butterflies. So, anyways... That's where I got my butterflies. So if you wanna, if you're interested in this tutorial, and you need to pick some of those up, that's a place you can get them. Okay, so I take about one of these plastic disposable spoons full of Mod Podge, and I throw it and just in my bowl, and I close my Mod Podge, obviously, because I don't want it to get that nasty like film on top of it. And then I take maybe measuring I just want to dilute it enough so maybe like two tablespoons of water I think that's about what it was maybe even just a tablespoon and a half of water and I stir it together so you get like this milky white substance you want the the Mod Podge to be pretty thick in the water so it's basically you want let's see 70% Mod Podge, and keep baby wipes or a towel handy, because I'm messy, and I know I'm not the only one in the world, but anyways, for this, for your fingers and everything, because you will be handling the, the butterflies. So I keep baby wipes, napkins, stuff like that handy in my craft room also. I don't know, that's just another tip. So anyways, you want it like a runny consistency, and you want to take your butterflies here, pull one out 
Okay, look how gorgeous these butterflies are. I don't know if you can hold it to where you can see it. Like, look at the detail. They are just gorgeous. I love these butterflies. Okay. So, anyways, um, you take... Oh, I didn't even tell you. Okay, you're going to need, like, a square box container here. And I've lined mine with foil, and I recommend you use either foil or, um wax paper to line it because the glue is sticky like you know you already know that part but so you're going to want it a non-stick surface basically to mold your butterflies over as they dry and it does stick a little bit to the foil but not as it would to paper so anyways so you need a foil or um wait, I just said it wax paper line box with some nice edges and creases down in the corner and like make sure when you you mold your foil or your wax paper into there you get the corners pretty good because that's what you're going to mold your little butterflies with so okay that's okay let me get this this is my very last little butterfly i'm gonna have to order some more okay because i used like almost all of my butterflies on my atcs Okay, let me stick my spoon over here on my regular Mod Podge bowl. Okay, so what you do is you take a butterfly and you throw it in there. And you just, you know, submerge your butterflies in, in it and let it soak up the, the Mod Podge and the water and everything. And it's going to be completely drenched. Let me see. La, la, la. Well, it's soaking. I'm trying to find my tweezers just because I don't want to get this glue underneath my nails. And if you're like me and you're really finicky, like I got hot glue on the tip of my tweezers, um, I recommend a pair of tweezers for your craft room also because I don't like to be that big of a mess. So you kind of fish it out of the, the Mod Podge. And you're going to want to tap off because, like, the Mod Podge likes to get in, like, the holes and stay there. So I just kind of just, you know, tap it, let it drip, stick it back in there. <laughs> Not really, but... Just let it drip, shake it out as much as possible, let me get a better grip. You just keep it in your bowl and you shake. If you tip your bowl, the, the, you won't worry about shaking in the Mod Podge. See, so you got, you could tap it on the side. But what you're, you're trying to do is get the Mod Podge out of the holes to where it doesn't close off the holes. And as it dries, it'll drip out of there also, so. Okay, once you have that, what you do is you take and you lay the big butterfly right here on the corner of your box, and you kind of just push it over and you hold it there until it kind of just, you know, the weight of the wet keeps it down. See, there we go. See how it's sticking? So as it dries, it's going to mold towards the, the shape of the, the edge of the box. And you want to keep an eye on it. Sometimes they're a little stiffer um, and tighter, um, tighter made, I guess. Like, I don't know how do you explain it. Like, sometimes the, the fibers are wound tighter or, or made tighter than others. So you just kind of just check on it. Make sure it's not opening all the way back up every few minutes for, like, the first five minutes. If it's not, then you should be good after that. Okay, and then here's the little one. And you do the same tapping and shaking and rubbing to get the excess off. And then I dropped it in there again. Okay. So, sorry. I'm doing like double the work because I'm talking and working at the same time. Okay. And you kind of just tap the glue out of the holes. Okay. And then with this one here, I don't want to get this one all messy. Okay. You just kind of kind of push it into the corner. You see, if you can see what I'm doing, like I'm just pushing it into the crack of the box. And it should stay there and it'll mold to that shape. So, okay, and then you just leave that there for four or five hours until it dries. It, pro it might not take that long. Like, um, I have heat gun them, but Mod Podge has a tendency to bubble. And I don't like that, so... <laughs> But as you can see, like, 
this butterfly here, like the Mod Podge is already dripping out of the, um, am I even holding it where you guys can see? Okay, let me see. Fix my lighting a little bit. Okay, can you see? Yeah, you can see a little better. Okay, so you can see where the Mod Podge is already starting to drip out of the, the cracks there. And this is the one I did about two hours ago before I started filming. Now, I did this, as you, um, Mod Podge is a glue, so, um, I'm working on my mom's Mother's Day thing, and I wanted to use this, um, incorporate one of these butterflies into my project, and it, the, the colors are purples, greens, and creams. Um, I'm using the Chateau de Lavender set from DCWV. So anyways, I wanted to put one of these butterflies in there, but, um... I wanted it to be purple. So instead of molding the purple one, what I did was I dunked it in here in the uh, Mod Podge solution here. And, um, okay, I'm put that there so I can use it later. And then I just laid it flat and I sprinkled some of my Ultra Fine Martha Stewart, um, purple glitter over it that matched the, um, the paper the best. So. Um, that one's dry right here, and that's what you kind of get, like the glitter kind of closes off the holes, but what I wanted it for was to take, see here's the one that I molded, and then as it gets stiff, I was, and it, I can, you can kind of see, you can mold the butterfly. Thank you. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to take and lay this one flat and kind of make like a 3D embellishment with the purple behind it. You know, sort of like a purple glimmer shadow. So that's why I plugged my hot glue gun back in. So I can show you guys the finished butterfly. So just a little bit of glue down the center. Hoping I get this in focus. I don't know if you can see where I put the glue right down the center. And then I'm just going to line the butterflies up evenly to where the center pieces touch each other. Okay. And you can mold it some more to... See, that's the large one. Oh, I got a little bit of hot glue coming through the bottom. So, that's the big one. And then the little one. Okay, I put this one on the side. See, I'm going to push it back in there a little bit. See, it. sometimes they have a life of their own. See, like what I was talking about, how sometimes it'll start lifting over the corner. Like, you might like that. But I kind of like mine to bend as much as possible. So, when it's completely dry, I can kind of mold it and open it the way I want it. Not the way that it wants to go. And I just touched it. Okay, and here is my little butterfly that I did. That I just threw back in there. I got hot glue strings on my hand. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> oh, I hate how stringy hot glue gets. Okay. And this is the little butterfly after it has been dunked and dried. And you can mold this also. I just kind of like to like, fold it sort of like it's in mid-flight and just leave it like that. I think it's gorgeous. Um, they're also colorable, so you can, you know, um, color them with some Glimmer Mist or some Lindy's. Oh, this one's still a little bit damp. Okay, so, um, anyways, I'm going to put this back over here to dry. Another tip is, as it's drying, if it's taking longer, it might because be because, like, where you have it is, like, in a seriously wet spot. Like, I don't know, here, let me move this one over onto this side. Like, if you can see, like, where that one left, like, a bunch of liquid as it's dripping out of its holes. If you just move it to a drier spot, it'll dry faster that way, too. Because if you leave it in a puddle of water, it's just going to stay wet longer until the water underneath it dries. So, that's my butterfly tutorial. And I'll take a picture of this and I'll put it at the end. So I hope you guys give this a try. I love the effect I get with this on projects. And you can, you know, glitter it whatever colors. And you get such a shabby chic effect if you use pinks or light greens or blues. And I just, I love 
the way the butterflies turn out. I love butterflies anyway, so any kind of butterflies on a project for me is an added bonus. So why don't you guys check out um, www.zibit.com backslash shabby scraps and check out these butterflies. I think they're like $1.50 or $1.75 for a 5 or a 10 pack. So yeah, check them out and, and have fun with them, you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Toodles. Thank mm -hmm. you.